Schizophrenia is a mental disorder that's characterized by disorganized thinking, hallucinations, and inappropriate emotions. It is believed to affect one out of every 100 people. And within this population, 60% of them are men, and 40% of them are women. And in total, it is believed there are 24 million people who are suffering with schizophrenia worldwide. In terms of onset, schizophrenia usually appears in late adolescence or early adulthood. As for how the disorder develops, it seems to be very different for different people. For some, it seems like there's a sudden onset in response to some life stressor. But for others, it's more gradual, meaning that the symptoms sort of slowly develop over time. Now let's take a moment to talk about the different types of schizophrenia. And in general, there are two main types of schizophrenia. The first is positive schizophrenia, and the next is negative. And these aren't official diagnostic terms, but keeping this division in mind can be extremely helpful when thinking about all the different subtypes of this disorder. Positive schizophrenia is associated with the addition of symptoms that we don't normally find in regular people. So this is where we would get things like disorganized thinking. and hallucinations, so seeing things that aren't there or hearing things that aren't real. There's also an increase in inappropriate emotional responses. So that might include laughing or crying at inappropriate times. So that was positive schizophrenia, so now let's talk about negative schizophrenia. And you might say, hey, you've, you've already mentioned all of the symptoms here within the subtype of positive schizophrenia, so, so what is left for the negative kind? Well, negative schizophrenia is associated with the decrease of typical emotional responses. So while people with a, a positive variety of schizophrenia might laugh or cry at, at times that don't match that behavior, people with negative varieties of schizophrenia don't show any emotion. Things like a, a toneless voice or a complete lack of facial expressions. They might stop speaking or develop something called catatonia, which is when they sit motionless for hours at a time. And while that does include a, a smaller subset of the symptoms that we've talked about so far, it is still considered to be schizophrenia, even if it doesn't include all of the things that we would normally associate with it. So in general, if you're trying to, to separate this in your head, you can think about positive schizophrenia as an increase in inappropriate actions or behaviors or thoughts, while negative schizophrenia is associated with the decrease of appropriate thoughts or behaviors. So within these two, two types of schizophrenia, we can further break it down into subtypes and these subtypes are what would appear in the DSM, or in the list of formally recognized disorders. And they include paranoid schizophrenia, which is a, of, of the positive variety, and often includes hallucinations and delusions that are associated with uh, feelings of persecution and paranoia. We also have disorganized schizophrenia, which is also a positive type of schizophrenia. And that's associated with disorganized thoughts and speech. So people with disorganized schizophrenia might uh, display something that's called a word salad, meaning that when they talk, they'll just jump from sentence to sentence, from idea to idea, with no apparent link between them. We also have catatonic schizophrenia. And this is a type of negative schizophrenia. And this is usually what we think of when we think of negative symptoms. So catatonic, like catatonia, so not moving for hours, but also just an extreme slowness. And other interesting behaviors, like people with this type of schizophrenia, are, are known to parrot the speech of others, to, to just passively repeat everything that they say. And then last, we have what's known as undifferentiated. And that it's the term that we use to describe different clusters of symptoms that don't necessarily fall within these clean categories. So people with this diagnosis will show a, a variety of symptoms, both positive and negative. And lastly, I want to talk about the experiences of people with schizophrenia and how the disease develops over time. And one thing that's important to know is that schizophrenia is, cr is a chronic illness. There isn't really 
any recovery from it. It doesn't have a tendency to disappear the way that other psychological disorders can. And when we talk about schizophrenia, we're not really talking about recovery. Instead, we're just talking about management and treatment, helping people to cope as best as they can. That said, those who have a supportive environment and have access to doctors and medications can often live a fairly normal life, even though there, there still might be periods of their life when they're completely withdrawn to an inner world, where they're preoccupied with unrealistic or disorganized ideas and thoughts. For people who don't receive support, it's, it's a little more grim. Without treatment or a supportive environment, individuals with schizophrenia tend to become really withdrawn. They might isolate themselves and reject their community. And there can also be a high incidence of drug use. And of course, this makes sense. If when people don't have access to medications prescribed by, by doctors, they can often self-medicate. Other treatment can also involve hospitalization, sometimes long-term and involuntary hospitalization. But that certainly isn't the case for, for, for most people. So there we go. We've talked about the symptoms of schizophrenia. We've talked about how often you see it in the population. We've talked about how, how it begins and how it can develop. We've talked about the different types and subtypes of the disorder. And we've talked a little bit about how the disorder can affect the lives of the people who are diagnosed with it.